Hello everyone, this month I've got a bunch of travel stuff going on, and we're about due for a comic review, so I think now is as good a time as any to talk about a trilogy of comic book series that I've overlooked thus far in the show, uh, and we're, in the sense that we're kind of due for it, past due for it, also kind of due for it. Specifically, Dark Horse Comics adaptations of Timothy Zahn's original Thrawn trilogy. Now, these adaptations came out from 1995 to 1997, so they'll be kind of overlapping with a bunch of other comics and novels we'll be talking about going forward, including comic adaptations of Splinter of the Mind's Eye, The Han Solo Adventures, as well as Shadow of the Empire. But these kind of got started earlier, so I'm going to cover these now. The story of all these, how these books came to be can be found in my review of the novels themselves, and the link will be in the sidebar. As far as this book, these books go. All three adaptations were written by Mike Barron, who co-wrote The Rebel Opposition with Mike Stackpole, and also helped to relaunch The Flash after Crisis on Infinite Earths. However, the art team changes with each book. Heir to the Empire has cover art by o Oliver Vlatine and Fred Blanchard. Dark Horse Rising is art by Terry Dodson and Kevin Nolan. And The Last Command is art by Edvin by Kuovic, I think it's how I pronounced, and Eric Shanower. This leads to some significant issues with changes in art between books. In Heir to the Empire, in the novel, Leia has been pregnant long enough that the twins have started to kick. It's enough of a thing that it is one of the things we first hear when she when she's introduced, in terms of description of the story and what she's experiencing. Which would put her at about 16 to 25 weeks into the pregnancy. But in the art, she's barely showing. And we know she's barely showing, because later in the in the adaptation, we see her in her underwear while sleeping on Kashyyyk when she runs the Nogri there, and she's still got the same build she had during Return of the Jedi. In Dark Force Rising, on the other hand, Leia is clearly pregnant at the level where she's clearly looking for maternity combat fatigues, and not that much time has passed over the course of these two books. We haven't had the one month time jump that we got that we get in between Dark Force Rising and The Last Command. Similarly, there are issues here with the designs of the Nogri. Zahn describes them as muscular and cat like in their movements, which, in reading, gives me the impression of someone built like Donnie Yen or Bruce Lee, someone with who's lean, streamlined, and like has no bulk, but there's still plenty of muscle mass and thus is very menacing. As, or can be menacing in that regard. In Air of the Empire, Olivier, or Oliver Flatin and Fred Blanchard apparently just read Muscular, didn't read the cat-like movements park, and had Rook and Kabarak and the other Nogri we see built like a brick shithouse. Whereas on the other hand, in Dark Force Rising, Kabarak's design is much more lean, but not at Bruce Lee levels, but still alright, probably, clo yeah. probably closer to like Oh, I don't know. Chris Evans. On the other hand, in The Last Command, Rook looks like they cast a spare demon from Hellboy as the Nogri, for the Nogri in general. While there are issues of continuity of 
race designs or the New England races, there is some continuity of locations that is done well. For example, the art for Talon Card's Mercury base stays consistent for between the end of Heir to the Empire and the start of Dark Horse Rising. And some of the character designs generally stay the same as well. Card keeps a common character design between all three books, more or less, as does Mara Jade. And for that matter, Thrawn, though Thrawn's, the, how thin or not Thrawn's face is varies between books. Additionally, there's a mixed bag for the uh, opening page or panel of each book. The artists for all three books definitely recognize that Zahn is trying to evoke each Star Wars film opening on an establishing shot of a spaceship. Unfortunately, what they overlook is that all three films have the camera initially panning down on a spaceship. The Tantive Four in A New Hope, The Star Destroyer in Empire Strikes Back, or panning down to the Death Star in Return of the Jedi. All these shots in the story, on the other hand, are from below. Yes, I understand you want to... Like, this is how you establish scale for a large ship in a comic, and you can't have the transition shot, but having, like... But, like, for example, in Heir to the Empire, we introduce on the scout ships first, and then... We go to the uh, Chimera, but the scout ships are shot head-on as opposed to looking down and then moving over to the Chimera. It's it's almost nailing some of the visual language of Star Wars in comic form, but not quite there. As far as my thoughts on these adaptations are concerned, they're enjoyable enough, but they're underwhelming in places that matter. Heir to the Empire has some of the best landscapes of the series, held some of the best landscapes I've seen in any science fiction comic, um, at least ones that aren't written by Dave, or drawn, I should say, by Dave Gibbons. But, on the other hand, screwing up the Nogri and Leia's pregnancy, like, that's visually jarring. It, Dark Force Rising is better middle, middle ground, selling the desolation of the Nogri homeworld, and getting across the hay. Leia's pretty pregnant at this point, and also has a better kind of hybrid adaptation of what the middle ground terms of where the Nogri themselves look like. While The Last Command doesn't quite click in the art point, and in particular, that version of the Nogri just goes all the way in the wrong direction there as well, with um, going from super muscular to super scrawny. In my book, honestly, the best adaptations of, Thrawn's, of Zahn's original trilogy still remain the audiobook adaptations from Audible, and this isn't just because you can't screw up visuals in your head. A bad reader can screw things up for you, too. However, as I mentioned in my review of the original Thrawn trilogy, the part of the books, Mark Thompson just nails these audiobooks, hitting every single voice for every character, including female characters like Leia. While I'm certain audiobooks are great gigs, I'm honestly kind of shocked that I haven't seen him do more dub work, because he's amazing. Links to where you can get those on Amazon, or just a link to where you can get an Audible subscription so you can pick them up that way, will be in the show notes. Getting, as always, getting anything through those links helps to support the show. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.